In this video, I'll be reacting to one of the early uploads from the YouTube channel, The Game Terrorists, and I hope that you are a huge fan as, uh, as well as I am, because, well, their content is amazing. If you do like this video, please go ahead and uh, show support for their channel, and if you do like my channel, like my video, please consider to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Uh, let's go on with the video. This video is around 2013, I think it's around 8 years ago, so yeah, let's start the video. I hope that you like this video as well. Jumps from a building, lands in a haystack, gets up, fine, does it all again, Ezio's free, ba 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 da ba, free falling, but can he survive? I'm not too sure. <laughs> Falling from that height? My goodness, seriously? Da, 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 da. Hello internet, welcome to Game Theory. Hi. Tom Petty, I ain't. A few months ago, I did an episode on Assassin's Creed, looking at whether memories can be passed through genes. It was a good one. It even taught me a couple of things, like the fact that one gigabyte doesn't actually equal a thousand megabytes. Who knew that that was something I would have to look up? Well, a lot of you did, actually. But- Um... <laughs> It's a careless mistake, it's a careless mistake. But since then, a bunch of loyal theorists have been asking in the comments for a leap of faith episode. Hey, uh, sorry, what was the message again? Hey Matthew something like that. Hey Matthew, could you do another game uh, theory on Assassin's Creed? Creed about the Bay of Hay uh, on like, is it possible for Assassin, Assassin to jump at a high building down to the Bay of Hay? without breaking bones or even death. For a leap of faith episode. So here we are. Topic of the day, could the Ass Creed clan actually survive their famous leaps of faith? No, but hey, that's just- Leap of faith, not as you don't try. <laughs> just a theory, a game theory. Thanks for watching. Seriously though, your odds of walking casually away from an Assassin's Creed fall are slim. Far from impossible, but slimmer than a... uh... Slim Kirby? I don't know, I can't always think of clever similes, okay? Medical journals generally say that a fall from any height greater than 100 feet, or 30.5 meters, is in the red zone. Unsurvivable. And in Assassin's Creed, some of your biggest jumps triple that number. But let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start, by taking it to the extreme! Okay, so, so just now the reference is Let's uh, start from the very beginning A very good place to start It's one of the early songs that you learn in school That I learned in school to learn how to sing Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, uh, T I forgot Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, T, Do Falling out of a plane 6 miles, 31,000 feet Or 9,656 kilometers up in the air According to the Free Fall Database, since the 1940s, an astonishing 44 people have survived falls from planes at these tremendous altitudes. You heard right, 44 people survived falling out of a plane. Of those, 31 were classified as wreckage riders, people who fell that distance attached to or surrounded by a piece of the plane. The other 13 were pure freefallers, nothing to protect them. The thing is, although it's impressive that these people survived falls from tens of thousands of feet, any fall over 1,500 feet, or 457 kilometers, is going to be about the same, because that's the point you generally reach terminal velocity. To explain, gravity is accelerating you towards the Earth, right? But as you keep falling faster and faster, the air rushing past you pushes you back more and more, creating drag. Terminal velocity. Terminal velocity is the point where the two forces equal, and you no longer accelerate downward. After falling 1500 feet, this speed maxes out at around 120 miles per hour, or 54 meters per second. So if you're gonna fall, why not add 10,000 extra feet? Might as well enjoy the view on your way down. <laughs> now, using information from past fallers, we can critique oh the gosh. assassin's <gasps> technique. And quite honestly, they're doing a lot right. They spread their bodies like a skydiver 
Skydiver in the air, which increases their overall drag and slows their descent. When they land, they aim for a cushy substance. Ultimately, you want to land on something with give, with flex. A wooden cart filled with hay is far better than earth, concrete, and water. You heard right, water. Surprisingly, the surface tension between water molecules makes the impact just as hard and inflexible as concrete. Except when you hit concrete, your newly crippled body isn't forced to swim to safety. The one area for improvement is that the assassins are landing flat on their back. In the good old days of 1940, this position was thought to be the best way to handle a fall. Spread out the force of the impact across a larger surface area rather than placing lots of force in one part of the body. However, However, more recent studies say falling like a skydiver's landing position with legs and hips flexed is the optimal way to handle a fall like this. I think it's because the heart is uh, further away from the legs, so the legs take impact. That means uh, you most likely survive because your heart doesn't. Purr. In short, the odds of survival are low, but the assassins are doing everything they can to put the odds in their favor. All right, Felix Baumgartner, knowing that you still want to recreate Assassin's Creed? Fine, let's take the high dive achievement from Ascred 2. To earn it, you must leap from Florence's Campanile di Giotto. Man, this channel is so bad at foreign names. Campanile di Giotto. Look to me, it's a Mario. It's a me, Mario. Or as the Americans pronounce it, Campanile di Giotto. An 84.7 meter or 278 foot tower built around 1340. At this height, it's well above the 100-foot Red Dead Redemption Zone. By my calculations, the fall takes around 3.7 seconds to complete, and with the acceleration due to gravity being 9.8 meters per second per second... No, not necessarily, because, um, think again, this is not... The, the fall doesn't occur in the real world, it occurs in the game world, so maybe gravity is different, isn't it? We just plug these numbers into the equation to make sure that everything checks out. Distance equals one half acceleration due to gravity times time of the fall squared, and we get something that's not right. The equation should balance. Of course, we're not factoring in wind resistance, but that would make Ezio fall even slower, thus making this side of the equation even less. But we know that both the time of the fall and height of the building must be correct. The building is clearly identified in the game and the time we just measured, which means gravity in the Assassin's Creed world is wrong. So See, I told you, I was correct. So, recalculating to solve for gravity gives us 12.4 meters per second squared. That's over 125% of Earth's gravity. So, say you're 200 pounds. Congratulations! You just put on an extra 50 without even getting to enjoy that extra cheese doodle. In fact, 12.4 meters per second squared is greater than the gravity for every other planet in our solar system. Except for Jupiter. For <laughs> Jupiter levels of gravity, we need to rewind to the first Assassin's Creed and the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus, one of the game's signature locations. Here, we're jumping off its tallest minaret. The game mislabels it as the Minaret of the Bride, when in actuality it's the Minaret of Jesus. Probably in an attempt to avoid the religious name, but no need to worry about being PC here. Not that type of PC. There you go. The minaret stands at 77 meters tall, and you hit the hay in 2.8 seconds, which means that gravity here is nearly 20 meters per square second. That's easily over 2 Gs, and approaching Jupiter levels of gravity. To put that in perspective, if you weighed 200 pounds in the real world, in the Assassin's Creed 1 universe, you'd be hefting around a good 400. And remember, this is assuming ye olde Italy exists in ye olde vacuum. Factoring in drag would mean that whatever planet Assassin's Creed takes place on would have even more gravity. If Facebook were to classify the relationship between Assassin's Creed and this fundamental force, the status would be, it's complicated. 
Birthday, Big Bang, Gender, Confused, Interested in Random Play, Relas Relationship Status, is complicated with Assassin's Creed. Man, that has got to be the cheesiest joke I've used in a long time. What's this due to our chances of survival? Well, if you weren't facing certain death before, you certainly are now, because higher g-forces mean more acceleration in a shorter Ooh, time span. Wow. To calculate the velocity the instant before we hit the ground, we simply take the acceleration due to gravity and multiply by the time we've been falling. Under normal g-forces, you'd be hitting the hay at 36 meters per second, or a leisurely 80 miles per hour. With the game's skewed gravity, however, you'd be hitting the ground at nearly 46 meters per second, or 103 miles per hour. Jumping in Damascus would be even worse for your health, as the higher gravity results in a 56 meter per second, 125 mile per hour face plant. That's terminal velocity right there. The same as if you were dropping from over 1,500 feet, and you only had to fall one-sixth of the distance. Of course, drag would slow you down, but as I said earlier, it would also mean these gravity numbers would be higher. So all in all, not that bad of an estimate. But all of this is assuming that we even have the buildings to jump off of. Remember, we're talking about a double gravity world here. What else would life be like? Would life even be able to exist? This is a scenario known as hypergravity, and if Assassin's Creed truly depicted the real world with twice the normal g-forces... Can the concrete stand? Can the structure stand? Can the building be built? That's, that's true. None of these buildings would actually be standing. Structurally, they couldn't handle the heightened pressure and would collapse under their own weight. And humans? We would survive, but it would take quite a bit of adaptation. Humans exposed to hypergravity for extended periods show increased bone mass as the skeleton adapts to support the spike in weight. And with twice the gravity, everything gets twice as heavy, which means heavier blood. Who thinks of their blood as having weight, right? Well, the heart certainly does, as heavier blood means more work, making it especially difficult to pump upwards to the brain. In fact, some theorists propose that the dinosaurs went extinct when the Earth's gravity increased, making life unsustainable for supersized animals. The irony here is that, of all the people, the assassins would be the most affected. You see, the exertion of climbing tall buildings coupled with the high altitudes of their viewpoints, would result in them being much, much more prone to lightheadedness as their hearts struggle to get blood to the brain. Chances are, if tall buildings were still standing, they would pass out long before reaching the top of any structure, ultimately plummeting to their doom. Ooh. Leap of faith? Ha! <laughs> they wish they had the chance. More like tumble of... Fatigue? I, I don't know. I can't come up with any good punchlines that... Leap of faith, tumble of fatigue. <laughs> this week. Not that my punchlines are ever any good. So in the end, what have we learned today? Don't jump off of buildings. You will die. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Welcome back to the Super Amazing End Card Tournament. Super Amazing End Card Tournament! For last week, the chrono-crazed crowd crushed the Final Fantasy fans. In honor of Assassin's Creed, a very international- I thought- I thought that Chrono's trigger will, will not win there. Game. Today we're having a battle of the countries. A lot of people from all over the world watch this show. I see all the statistics in my analytics. Like, there's one guy over here that is in Singapore that is watching your video. I want you to go into the comments and type something, anything, in your native language. The country that comes the closest to getting one comment for every one view on this video from your country gets international bragging rights for life. Or until I decide to do this again. You're all loyal theorists, but what country has the most loyal of loyal theorists? Let's find out. I write Singlish for him! <laughs> While you're thinking of what to write in the comments, I'm just gonna stay here and encourage you to subscribe. So, you should do that. Subscribe. There's a lot of good stuff coming up. Like, really, I'm, I'm excited for the next couple months. And hey, click right here to start listening to my other <laughs> Assassin's Creed video. It's one of those underappreciated gems on this channel. Anyway, if you commented, subscribed, and watched the other Assassin's Creed video, you are now permitted to leave. Okay, thanks. Love you, pal.
Wow, you don't need so chicken, man. I got ya. Wow, piang eh. Wow, say. Oh, this one, this one. Oh, this comment is like, are you okay? Are you typing alright? No, I'm typing alright. That is what my Singapore. That that is what people in Singapore will say. So don't jump up for bidding. You die. So at least not a leap of faith. It's more like a tumble of, um, for tumble I think. Uh, tumble of fatigue. Yes, correct. But, oh. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.